Okay, today I'm gonna take a look at Slackware Current with the help of Surge. A lot of you guys know Surge from YouTube. He is on everybody's channel. He comments, he helps a lot of people with support questions. He is probably maybe the most active member of the YouTube Linux community. Surge, how are you doing, sir? I'm fine. So, uh, yes, helping people is um, actually quite easy for me because first of all, I studied system administration and network for three years at a sort of uh, university level and also I began with uh, the Ubuntu family then I stayed in the Debian family from there I went to the RPM family so I studied Fedora and OpenSUSE from there I went to Arch following uh, the Arch mid installer and looking at uh, the videos of Midfinger and after a while I went to Slackware and Gen2, and so I covered uh, the five big families with the exception of LFS, but I have no time for LFS, so <laughs> it's not exactly a real distribution that you would use as a daily driver. It's more like you said in one of your videos yeah. as a learning exercise. Uh, it might be interesting, but I have no time for it at the yeah. moment. Yeah, people always ask me about a LFS, and it's great for educational experience. Yes. If you want to do it, it's it's do it in a VM because it's, you're going to spend a couple of weeks on it anyway. That way, you can read documentation, do what you need to do in a VM. But people ask me about living in it. Uh, no. Other than other than Das Gregor, uh, no, even Das Gregor had a problem because uh, he could install it, he could install the packages uh, mm -hmm. with pain, but uh, for updates, he had a major problem because uh, the update is completely different on LFS than in all the other distributions. Right. So he couldn't stay on LFS, even yeah. if he liked it, but he couldn't stay on it. That's a problem. So, but LFS would be nice if you uh, went into a school for students and uh, the professor knows LFS quite well and would explain how to install LFS and what are the different parts and explaining everything quite well that would be interesting for the students. Right. Then they would know a lot about Linux, a lot about networking, a lot about the hardware and the packages and so on. And that could help them for other distributions. But mm -hmm. it's mainly in school, not yeah. in the real life. And, and, and the other distribution people ask me about living in all the time, and I know you're a really big fan of Gentoo, so I want to bring yes. this up. Yes, is, yes, you know, Gentoo is definitely not for everybody either. I, I get a lot of newer users that are interested in it, but if you're not going to really take use of the use flags and you know building things to, to yes. suit your needs, you're better off with a, a binary distro anyway. Yes. Uh, so. There is a very good video uh, on Gentoo, whom Gentoo is for, uh, done by, I think, Angry Teach uh, Gentoo, and it's five minutes video and in this video, he explains the conditions for you to like Gentoo. And if right. you don't have these conditions, don't try it. It will not be for you. So for Gentoo, you will have you must have patience because if you you are too <laughs> patient, the co compilation time will annoy you for sure. That's one thing. The second thing is sooner or later you'll get issues. You have to go to the forums or to the internet to, to search how to fix these issues. Uh, but if you like that sort of thing, then you will love Gentoo. But otherwise, yeah. of course, Gentoo will not be for you. It will and, that, that, yeah. and that is the big thing with uh, things like Gentoo, things like Arch, and what we're discussing today, Slackware, is you do have to fix some of your own problems. You have to be willing to go to wikis and read documentation and yes. sometimes solve your own problems. You have to be your own support network. Uh, you know, you probably need to be somewhere else. <laughs> yes, but uh, uh, for Slackware and for Gentoo, we have uh, some, I would say, some uh, distributions based either on Slackware or on Gentoo that might help you. For Slackware, I would say Salix, because yes. Salix has a package management which solves the dependencies which is called slapped get which is the slackware app get slapped hyphen get uh, and this is only for sales uh, for gen 2 uh, the closest to gen 2 is calculate and calculate uh, has uh, plenty of scripts 
that uh, in fact are doing what you would have to do manually on a pure gent. So you know this pattern called the emerge minus AVUDN at world and all those things uh, to rebuild the modules. Everything is done by a script and a calculate. You are not even aware of that. When you do the update, it does everything for you. It yes. will check if your configuration files have a mistake or not. Uh, it will uh, edit these mistakes. It will correct them. It will do the update. It will sync with their repos, the Gentoo repos, and the layman, so the EIX update. It will upgrade your system. It will do the emerge minus minus that clean and it will rebuild the modules it does everything for you so that helps you a lot if you want to begin with gentoo i would say either go uh, on calculate or on redcore but redcore is only lxqt and perhaps kde plasma uh, in the future but you have only uh, these two right. choices you have nothing on calculate you have uh, xfc you have mate you have cinnamon you have kde plasma you have Alex Cute, so you have five choices. Yeah, Redcore is really nice because I like the uh, wrapper they put around Emerge, uh, what he calls his package S manager Sisyphus. S yeah, S and so you have uh, an, uh, on Redcore, you can do it in the command line because Sisyphus is a command line, but it's, right. it is also um, they have the Sisyphus GUI. If you mm -hmm. prefer, you open the GUI and you do what you have to do normally in the terminal, you do it in the GUI. You can do that also on Calculate if you wish. You can install Porthole, but installing Porthole without understanding what is going to happen is quite dangerous. So I right. would recommend that to a new user. Uh, yeah, you it can... might help him, but he might uh, do a lot of mistakes with it. Well, today we're going to discuss a little bit about Slackware. First of all, uh, Slackware, who's it for, Serge? Uh, so what, what user? So what user? people who want to have a complete control of their distribution, but mm -hmm. using um, either binaries or uh, to compile from source. They have the choice. You can do both on Slackware. On Gentoo, normally you do mainly only from source, but on Slackware, you can do both. One interesting thing with Slackware, if you use uh, the stable branch, so uh, for the moment, the 14, the 2, and in the future, the 15.0, the one big advantage of Slackware, you won't have uh, any update, won't break your system. It is absolutely impossible to break your system. That is a very big advantage. But, uh, because I saw that even on Pepimi 9, after an update, yeah. uh, English Bob couldn't boot. So it happens even on Pepimi. On Slackware stable, it doesn't happen. Because Patrick gives you only the security fixes and the bugs fixes, but uh, it changes nothing at all. So this scenario cannot happen. So for stability, I mean, people think of, you know, Debian stable or CentOS, you would say stack Slackware is in that kind of category that yes, yes. you basically install it and forget it if you want a stable yes, distro? Yes. I know many uh, network administrators who have a uh, Slackware on their server because they know it, it doesn't change. Yeah, it won't they be updated. Want to, yeah. they, want to, they want to have a stable system for months or years, and yeah. with Slackware, they have it. Yeah, and, and a lot of uh, servers, I mean, people people turn off the updates on them anyway. They, they don't want yes. the risk of things breaking, so it makes sense to, to run something like Slackware. Yes, but you have to deal with your own. What you have with CentOS is that you get a 10 years support that yes. you don't have on Slackware. So right. if you want support, you will go with CentOS. Right. Well, today I'm going to be installing Slackware Current, um, which is more, I guess, up to date than the the last release you mentioned, 14.2. That was released two years ago, June of 2016. Yes. Is uh, the current going to have fresher packages when you yes. install it? Yes. Yes. Um, I notice. Yes. Um, the ISO size for it is around three gigs. I think when I pulled it down, I don't have it with me. I noticed it's a 
fairly big ISO, so it installs like a, a ton of programs, a yes, full that's desktop true. environment. Mm. Yes, that's it, because it has all the desktop environments that you can get on Slackware. They are in this ISO, plus you've got a huge kernel, because you can slim it down, but uh, normally uh, the default will be the huge kernel, and this yeah. takes place. You know, uh, all the packages, all the uh, desktop environments, and the window managers, because you have several window managers in Slackware, and this huge kernel, all of this takes place. So with Slackware, um, with 14.2 or with the current ISO, since they're so big, these, these ISOs, there's no kind of like net install. I mean, everything is on the ISO. Do you have to be connected to the internet at all to install Slackware? Uh, to get uh, to the internet? Um, at a certain moment, uh, it might be because they ask you if you want to configure the network. So. Uh, probably it would be better to be connected to the internet because then you can already put uh, IP addresses and things like that, yes. Right. Yeah. But it's not and necessary. I, if, you, if you have the CD, you, you, you can put it on, on your computer. Right. And, and I ask that because occasionally I do have people ask me questions about some of these Linux installers. Some people actually do install them on machines that are not connected to the internet. And uh, of course, some installations just will not work. Things like uh, Antergos, for example, you know, it's a net installer. You can't get that installed without being connected, so. Yes, yes. Okay. All right, well, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and run through the installation of Slackware Current in a virtual machine today. I've, been, I've done a couple of VM installs of it. I've also installed it on a uh, separate drive on my main machine. I, I have five SSDs in my machine for, for hopping now. I have one of these IC docs that, that make it interesting. So uh, the last thing I, I do want to mention, the uh, main div of you know, Slackware, Mr. Patrick Volkerding, recently yes. has announced that he is needing funds, he is uh, short on cash, and he hasn't been paid for his work uh, the way he should be. At least in the last couple of years, he was in business with someone that I guess may have cheated him out of some money, maybe not. I not I won't just throw that out there and, and say it's a fact, but Patrick needs money, so I'm going to link to Patrick's PayPal account. He recently set up a PayPal account to for, for donations and but the, the guy is hurting for money, so I do want to give a shout out to all my viewers, anybody that views this particular video, if you've got a couple of bucks to spare, uh, send Patrick a little money. Slackware is the oldest active Linux distribution. It started in 1993. So Patrick has been working on Slackware for 25 years and you know, he, he deserves our help. Any thoughts on that, Serge? Yes, so uh, I wrote an email to Eric Amelius to ask him how I could help him. And uh, he told me that Patrick is considering uh, the fact that people would not uh, necessarily like to give him money through PayPal or through Patreon. And so he's trying to find another solution for people, for uh, these people who don't want to pay through PayPal or Patreon. But yeah. of course, you can already, he has, he's got a link uh, to PayPal and he will create links to uh, other kinds of uh, giving him money. He's working on it and uh, I think uh, within a few days or within a few weeks I will get a new email from Eric telling me uh, the latest situation. Yeah. So I'm and waiting I, I, and for that I, email. Yeah, I, I've run into this, this problem too on, on my channel. Uh, people, some people will use Patreon, some won't for out of principle. Uh, some people just can't use it because you, it's required to have a, a credit card <laughs> yes. and some people don't do that. PayPal, the same way PayPal works for some people, it doesn't for others and again on principle some people don't want to use PayPal. There is a another option I recently signed up for too to give people just a different payment option. It's called Libra Pay. Yes. Which uh, allows anonymous payments, which is very cool. It's something, you know, somebody like Richard Stallman, for example, uh, is a big proponent of, you know, being able to pay for things anonymously, never having to give your name. He doesn't do credit cards, things like that. So Libra Pay might be an option that uh, Patrick looks into, although I noticed in the news uh, about a week ago, Libra Pay was having some real issues. Apparently, uh, the bank behind Libra Pay basically dropped them and they have to. 
yes, find some other. Yes, they have to look uh, for another solution. They are uh, working yeah. on it, so I think yeah. Liverpool will come with a good solution in a few weeks. No. Without, I think so, without any problem. Yeah. In the end, though, you pr he probably needs to have at least two or three payment options because uh, none of them are going to cover everybody, uh, depending on what part of the world uh, yes. you're in and what your situation is. Yes. Frasov, there's a very good uh, situation, for instance. Frasov gives you, you can pay either through uh, the equivalent of PayPal, Patreon, but they also give their bank account. So, and this is very good for me because I can transfer money from my bank account to their bank account without, um, uh, what I say, intermediate player. See, like PayPal or Patreon or some, someone else. Yeah. I go from, directly from one bank to the other. Well, I just wanted to, to throw that out there. So again, the link will be in the description uh, as far as a uh, link to Patrick's PayPal account. And again, he's asking for donations. He, he put the, the call out uh, about a week ago. He, he posted on the internet that he needed help and he set up this PayPal account. So if you guys can help him out, please do. So, Serge, I am going to run through the Slackware current installation here in VirtualBox. So I created a 30 gig VM, so I would assume that would be enough space. I know the install size is going to be rather large because I'm going to do the full install, which I believe takes around 9 gigs of space. Yes, 30 gigs is plenty of space. It's more than enough. Okay. All right, so I am at the... Uh, the boot screen here it has boot colon and then just a blinking cursor we could enter I guess uh, extra parameters here if we don't need to which I won't need to we could hit enter or we could just wait two minutes and it will automatically boot up uh, I will hit enter it's loading up all right and now we are at the uh, key map. Select the keyboard map. Uh, I use a US keyboard. It is the default, so I should not need to change this. If I did need to change it, I would enter one now at this prompt. I will just hit enter. And now we're at the login. Slackware login has some important uh, information to read. Uh, basically, we need to create our partitions. So uh, we need to log in as root. So I will log in as root. You are already root on Slackware. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you actually have to uh, type the word root to, yes. to log in here at this point of the screen. Yes. yes. Uh, now we need to create some partitions. I like CF disk if it's on the ISO, which being such a big ISO, CF disk is here. I will create a new partition so I have 30 gigs of space I'm gonna create a 2 gig swap a lot of times I don't even bother creating a swap in these VMs because I'm so limited on space but I will create a swap for this since I a 30 gig machine I've got I've got plenty of space so and then I will do the remaining 28 gigs let's see should we do an extended 4 file system I think so and no, no, we've got uh, one partition, of, uh, the second is root, uh, as you can have four primary partitions at this moment, you don't need an extended one. Okay. And I'm going to, uh, of course we have to turn the bootable flag on. Yes. And other than that, we are done here in CF disk. I need to actually write the partition table to the disk. It's going to ask me to confirm what I just did. You have to type the full word, yes in CF disk and then you quit the program and if I run LSBLK right now I should see yep yeah, so I have SDA 1 2 gig swap SDA 2 with the 28 gig you know big drive uh, after that we're ready to run through the installation which I believe is set up is yes, that a yes. set up okay and this launches our uh, what in curses installer here yes all right, the first option, so we have a, a little menu here. Uh, we could read the help information. I'm not going to do that. The second option is key map. Uh, US is the default key map, so I actually do not need to do that. So I can skip those first two in the menu. 
The third option is set up your swap partition. Now I need to do that, so I'm gonna hit okay here. Uh, it's already detected that slash dev slash SDA1 was the Linux swap partition I created. All I have to do is hit okay. So there's really nothing to do here. You hit yes. So no real typing here. Just click okay a couple of times and it pretty much takes care of everything for you. Assuming that I'm actually in the VM. <laughs> I had my mouse in Hangouts again. So, all right, now it's asking to select the Linux installation partition. So it's already figured out that the 28 gig drive is that. Do we want to format with no bad block checking? Yes. Now you can check for bad blocks, but it's it takes some time and it's usually not necessary. All right, now here is where we select our file system. We have uh, extend2, extend3, extend4, JFS, riserfs, butterfs, xfs. The default that's highlighted is ext4, so that's the one I will go with. And I hit enter. Is anything happening here? There we go. Looked like it hung for a second, but it, it it continued on. All right, please select the media from which to install Slackware. So I'm assuming it's asking about a CD, DVD, USB stick. I downloaded the DVD ISO, so I'm gonna choose the first option here. Install from a Slackware CD or DVD. And then make sure the Slackware disk is in your CD or DVD, D, DVD drive then press enter to begin the scanning process. Or if you'd rather specify the device name manually, experts only, choose that option. I will cho choose the automatic option rather than the manual. All right, and now, Mr. Surge, we are at the most important part of this installation, the package series selection. We have the option of Installing a variety of programs from like the base Linux system, which of course we need, to things like Emacs. I'm going to tick that off. I don't need Emacs installed. Uh, KDE, do I want to use KDE? I will leave it ticked on. Um, let's see, is there anything else that... Yes, you could, uh, for instance, uh, put off uh, the F. The F is for frequently asked questions, so you can put yes. it off. I, I don't need the documentation. There's one other one I definitely don't need. The last one, why, is games. I don't need any games installed on the system. I will just, uh, you know, take the base packages, you know, some libraries, and the two desktop environments. Other than that, yeah, the X Windows system, I think we need that. Yes. <laughs> we'll, keep, we'll, we'll keep that. Yes. So, all right, so the next screen is select the prompting mode. Uh, the default is terse. I'll go with that. And now it's installing all the packages. Yes, and you will see it will do by series. It will be yes. A, then it will be uh, all, all, it has a letter. The letter is always for something very precise in the Slackware, and it will install all the packages from that letter, that letter is in fact a folder, and within that folder you've got all the packages. And this this portion of the install will take a few minutes, so yes. I will pause the recording. It will. It is the longest part of the installation. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so that portion of the installer has completed. Now it says make a USB flash boot. So if your computer supports booting from a USB device, it is recommended that you make a USB boot stick from your system at this time. It will boot your computer straight into the root file system on slash dev slash SDA2. Please insert a USB flash stick and press enter. I won't be doing that in this VM, so I can skip this. For those of you that want to, you would choose create a USB stick here at this option. So the next portion of the screen is a very important uh, the bootloader. Lilo Linux Loader is a generic bootloader. There's a simple installation which tries to automatically set up Lilo to boot Linux, yada yada yada. 
do we want to do the simple install, the expert install, or skip, which means we're not installing a bootloader. Obviously, we need to install a bootloader here. So I'm going to do the simple option, where it will install Lilo automatically. And now configure Lilo to use frame buffer console. Um, basically, we can change the resolution of the frame buffer console. I will set it. No, to... no, no. Choose, choose the default one. You, you, I should choose the standard yes. one. The, the, the first one from the list, the default one. Use the the first one that says yes. standard, or the one that says ask. The the standard. Standard. Okay. Now it says optional lilo append equals kernel parameters, so we can add some extra parameters uh, at boot time. I can just hit enter here. And now where to install lilo, I'm going to install to the master boot record. It's scanning the partitions and installing lilo. Now GPM configuration. Uh, the GPM program allows you to cut and paste text to virtual consoles using a mouse. So this is pretty important stuff here because there may be times where we actually do need the ability to, to copy and paste in a TTY. So shall we load the GPM program at boot time? I choose yes. Would you like to configure your network? Absolutely. We need to enter a host name. So I will create a host name. Um, we need to create a domain name, so we'll create a domain name. Now configure type for our domain, our local domain here. Uh, we have the options of static IP, DHCP, loopback, and network manager. Mr. Surge, you suggest DHCP for connecting yes. our Ethernet? Yes. Okay. So I will choose DHCP server to configure Ethernet. And now it's asking set DHCP host name. Some network providers require that the DHCP host name be set in order to connect. If so, they'll have to be assigned a host name to your machine. Um, I just hit enter here, or I, I don't need to enter anything for this, no, do I? You, you are not obliged to enter. You only yeah. are obliged to enter if your ISP provider needs it, 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 Right, because I don't have one. Uh, your network system is now configured to use DHCP, and it gives me my host name, domain, IP, netmask, gateway, name server. Okay, hit yes. Confirm startup services. So this is all the programs that will run at startup. Some of them are ticked on, some of them are not. Uh, I'm probably good with the defaults here, but yes. I will yes. run down the list. I mean, it's gonna start things like a cron D, of course. Yes. Uh, it's not going to start cups, but I am on a VM. I won't need the cups print server. Let's see. Anything else? MySQL is here, but this isn't a web server. I won't need that. But for those that would need it, it's here. We could also start a Samba. SSH is ticked on. I do occasionally SSH into these VMs, so I'm glad that's ticked on. I'm going to hit OK. Would you like to try out some custom screen fonts? No. Hardware clock set to UTC. Um, my hardware clock is set to local time, so now it's asking me about my time zone. US slash central is available in the list. That is the time zone for me. Now it's asking default window manager for X. So what should be my default window manager? I have options here. We have KDE, XFCE, Fluxbox, Blackbox, Window Maker, FEWM, uh, TWM. Wow, that's a strange one. <laughs> you know what? KDE uh, is probably the one I'm going to go with. But for those that want to, you know, maybe mess around with Fluxbox or Window Maker, there are options. All right, warning: no, no password detected. So we do need to create a root password. It's asking me for my password. Of course, I have to re-enter it a couple of times here for confirmation. System configuration and installation is complete. We may now reboot our machine. So if I hit OK here, the machine should reboot. I go down to Exit Slackware Setup. And it's asking me to remove the installation disk. So if this was on a physical machine, this is where you would take out the live DVD or the live USB stick. Uh, for me, I think it will do this automatically.
Now we'll wait, wait, <clears throat> wait for a reboot. And yes, we have Slackware installed. So it's loading Linux. Now that's a, a pretty painless install there, Serge. Uh, that is, I mean, if anybody's ever run through uh, Incurse's install, like in you know some of the older versions of, of Debian, those that are familiar with, with you know Debian installs, that I mean that's no more difficult than that. So very easy, very straightforward. All right, I am at a login screen. We have only one user root. So, I will log in as root, and it says I have mail. <laughs> it says Linux 4.14.58. You have mail. So that's interesting. If I hit, if I type start x now, will it load KDE? That's what we chose as our default, and it does. KDE 4 is loading up. This may take a second. I'm gonna go back to the chat window here with Surge. All right, Surge, where do you think I should go now that I'm in KDE? Uh, where should so, we start? So either you can show your views, all the packages that, are, that were installed. Mm -hmm. This is one option. And the second option is to show to your views, how are you going to update the system? Because it will not be like uh, on the other distributions where you do, for instance, on the Debian one, you do, uh, so do apt get or apt update and apt upgrade. But here it's, it will not be the case. So I suggest you to first show what the applications are in now, and then I will tell you how we will yeah. proceed with the update. Well, we should cover what is installed on the system uh, very briefly because this was a big ISO and it installs pretty much everything you can think of. So under development, of course, we have a lot of develop developer tools like CMake, Qt4, uh, some IDE stuff, uh, various text editors. Uh, you do have multiple programs of, of the same type installed on, on Slackware. We should mention that. we talked off camera there's about six different terminal emulators installed under education we have oh, language packages uh, we have mathematics a lot of mathematics programs actually we have fractions calculator geometry uh, I've never actually seen this many educational programs installed on any distro I've ever looked at the education category here has a ton of stuff uh, most of it I've never seen before. Science programs. Now, desktop planetarium I've seen. That's really neat for those that uh, you know like to play with telescopes and view the night sky. Uh, we have a periodic table of elements. So this this would be good for kids. You know, you get kids that are in school. Let's see games. We do have a games category, and it does actually include some games. A lot of games. A lot of the K games. So K snake, collision, K bounce, K breakout. Cough, which I guess is golf, but with a K. <laughs> the KDE guys really need to quit with the K. It's getting annoying. Under graphics, now this would be programs that would interest me for some of the work I do. Uh, we have, of course, Krita, Ocular, GIMP, and this is GIMP 2.10. This is the latest GIMP. We have uh, Scanlight, Jiki, we have a PDF viewer, we have uh, Xsane for our scanner. Under internet, let's see, under internet we have CMonkey, CMonkey Mail, we have a BitTorrent client, of course we have HexChat for IRC chat, you open up HexChat. I wonder if Slackware is one of those distributions that actually set it up to uh, connect to their support channel by default. It doesn't look like it. That is a nice feature though. Also under internet, we have Pigeon for Instant Messenger. We have uh, Firefox and Thunderbird are both installed. Conqueror with a K, of course, is KDE's uh, web browser. 
And quickly, Multimedia. Multimedia has a ton of stuff. We have Amarok XMMS. So two audio players. We have K Player for a media player. M Player, Audacious. That's a third music player. We have Juke. So that's four audio players. Plus you can use both the media players for audio. Dragon Player. Uh, you have seven, seven different multimedia players installed. Uh, that is interesting. <laughs> And we might install another one here in a minute, Serge. Uh, we might try to get uh, SM Player installed in just a second. Let's see. Office. Do we have Office installed? Is LibreOffice installed? It does not appear. Caligra is installed, though. So it does have Office programs installed. Not LibreOffice, though, but we can get LibreOffice if we need it. And then, of course, all our system settings and such. Uh, utilities Let's see anything that jumps out at me here the Thunar file manager that, that's XFC's file manager so we have a couple of different file managers several text editors a lot of text editors and some terminal em, terminal emulators so Serge now we are logged in to KDE as root, root is the only user we have. We obviously need to create a home user because it is dangerous to only be root on your system. Everything we do now, we have root privileges. So we need to create a standard user. Uh, so I've pulled up KDE's console. What is the best way to go about uh, adding a user in Slackware? I know there's a couple of different uh, scripts, scripts we could run at this point. User add. User add. Uh, typical Linux command to add a user. User add. Mm. All right. So, uh, what groups should we add? Uh, yeah, so our user. At this point, we. Well, we're just going to add. Yes, a user. No, no groups. So, uh, user add as the name of the user, or what yeah. kind of flags do we give? So we will give some options. We will give the minus m option to create the home user for that user. Mm -hmm. So you will have um, all of that. You will have uh, its own directory. Which right. Is so absolutely. this is where it would create um, slash home slash name of yes. user for you. Yes. Okay. That's it. Then the second option is to give him a shell. So minus s, and then you can choose your shell. I would say slash b slash bash. Okay. So slash m, and then do we need to give a path yes, to the no, home no, folder? No, 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 no. no, uh, no. Minus m space, and then another option minus s space mm -hmm. then you give which shell in this case slash bin slash dash yep. and then a space and then at the end you give the username you can choose you can say tt or direct yeah you have to choose okay and i have run that command now to check and see if that user was created first of all you need to give that uh, user a password ah yes so, so you type is it? Space, I'm sorry. What was that? The password. So P A P A S W D for password. Space and T T or Derek. I don't know the user. Yeah, I created the D T user. It's going to ask uh, about my password. It will yes. ask for confirmation. Yes. And now we should have a D T user. So now you have a D T user, but mm -hmm. now if you wish, you can add him to uh, the different groups. Right so and. We're going to use user mod for this. Yes, then space and, and minus uh, uh, lowercase a, uppercase g. G. Yeah. Why the uppercase g? Because you want to append that user to groups other than his natural group. The natural group for this user is the same as his username. If right. you do minus a and lowercase g, and you give the name of the groups your own user group disappears so you have to take attention so you need capital G so the uh, uppercase G and then you can put audio comma video comma CD-ROM comma uh, wheel space and at the end TT. so I'm gonna add this user to a few groups uh, yes because obviously in software, you're not automatically added to these groups you have to yes. do it manually so I will add myself at least two, three or four groups uh, just to 
make sure we can do some things. The wheel group is important so we can have uh, sudo privileges if I want to add this user to the sudo sudoers file later, which I might do. Um, and then the last thing after uh, the uh, list of groups is my username. Yes, space your username. Space uh, username. So uh, in these groups, uh, do you have wheel or do you have sudo? Wheel. Wheel, that's good. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So now that you have wheel, uh, okay, now you have to edit uh, the uh, slash etc slash sudoers file to mm -hmm. uh, allow wheel to get these privileges. And now, uh, the right way to do it is you choose your editor. For, for instance, if you prefer nano, it will be editor in uppercase letter equals nano space vi sudo but if you and i know you like vim you can say vi sudo and you will be in vim I, I will do the editor equals nano command because i i want people to see that you can change the editor but you are correct if you just do vi sudo you are in vi so you do need to know how vi works uh, and, otherwise editor equals nano is really what you need to yes put and here. why is it important to choose vi sudo because if you look you will be in a temporary file for the moment, and Visudo will check the syntax of this file. So if there is a mistake, it will tell you there is a mistake. If you do right. it manually by editing slash tc slash sudoers or a file under sudoers.d, if you do a mistake, it might happen that uh, very weird things happen and you don't know why, because you don't know you did a mistake in that file. And I have the uh, sudoers file open in nano here, and this is a, a very easy way to add uh, users to give them sudo privileges. You just un uncomment the line of a wheel all equals all all. Uncomment that line. Any member of the wheel group now has sudo privileges. Control X is how you exit out of Nano. It's going to ask me, do I want to write to this file? I do want to write to this file. And now we should have our DT user. We added him to a member of certain groups, and now the DT user has sudo privileges. So, where to now, Serge? So, so now we have uh, these privileges. Uh, we will update the system. So, uh, you have two choices now, because uh, as you are, have these sudo privileges, either you can do in a channel su space hyphen to be root, or sudo space minus s it's it's up to you yeah to switch over to the root user i'm currently still in, as the root user here in console so uh, we we can do anything we need to do uh, should we try to update the system because we haven't run any kind of uh, update since the installation so i'm not sure if there's packages that are available for update or not yes we can check if there are updates well so uh what is the package manager that what what tool the Slackware using? So um, Slackware uses now uh, Slack package. So it's uh, S L A C K P K G. This is the name, and then you can tell which command you want to do. So we will do the first mistake because normally you have to do something, but it's very good for your users, uh, for your viewers, sorry, uh, to see what happens if you don't do it because Slack will tell you. So you do Slack package space update and you will see the warning it will give you uh yes you do not have any mirror selected so the first so. thing you have to do in slackware you have to choose a mirror and you have to choose a mirror for the current branch not for the stable branch so where is this file it is in slash etc slash slack package slash mirrors slash etsy slash slack package slash mirrors yes is that the name of the file or is that a directory this is the name of the file so okay. you do vim or nano okay. all right and this is our mirror list a very long mirror list yes. because it is in two parts the first part is for the stable branch so for the 14.2 at the moment right. and the second one is the same uh, list of mirrors but for the current branch right so I, I actually see what he's talking about you guys that are watching the video here if I uncomment one of these lines this will give me a mirror but this is for uh, the stable branch of Slackware this is Slackware 14.2 I need to keep going and you will see a 
another gigantic list of mirrors. This is for current. I need to go all the way to the bottom. The very last thing is the mirrors for the US for current. And I need to uncomment one of them, exactly one. Exactly one. Otherwise, exactly one. But you can do it. Uh, uncomment two lines, and you will see what happens when you do the update. So yep. you'll see your views. Ab absolutely. So I'm going to com uncomment two lines. two lines. This is a mistake, but yes. let's show you what will happen. Now I run Slack package update again. Yes. Slack package only works with one mirror selected. Please so, edit. Yes. Yeah. So. so Slackware tells you what happens when you do a mistake. So we have to go back to uh, yes. slash Etsy slash slack package slash mirrors and fix the problem. So I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom and now I need to comment out one of those mirrors and now I have one mirror uncommented. Exactly one, that's what we need. Exit back out. Now when we run the update, slack package update, yes, it says, do you want to really do this? Yes. Why for yes? And there we go. It looks like it is uh, Is it sinking. updating fast or slow? It says error downloading from that particular mirror we picked. So I may need to pick a different mirror. Uh, maybe you have to pick another mirror. Yes, yeah, so let me uh, go back. So, And this is good that that actually happened. Uh, sometimes you do have problems with mirrors, especially if you're only working with one mirror. All it takes is for, for that mirror to be down. And yes. so. I will choose another mirror in the list and let's see now it is updating just fine so that first mirror that I unco uncommented was obviously down yes. the next one is working just fine and as far as the uh, speed yes it is actually really fast okay that's good sometimes with IPv6 it stays a very long time at each line and then you, you need yeah. to, uh, to do a workaround for it yeah. a matter of fact that uh, that Slack package update is already done. Okay. So that was. So, so the second step is what kind of updates do I have? Because I have updated the change logs. So now we will do Slack package space upgrade hyphen all. Slack package upgrade dash all. Yes. And, and you have and, an end cursor window with uh, the packages that you could update. And we do have packages available for upgrade. They're already ticked on. So if I just hit OK, it's going to update kernel generic 4.14.59. It's going to give me the kernel headers, the modules, the source. It's also going to give me Mesa 18.1.5. So okay. there's but, five packages. OK, the one very important thing you have to check in this list, you, you shouldn't do OK blindly. You have to see if there is a package named Slack package. Because if there is such a package, you need to upgrade Slack package before doing a second update and right. a second upgrade all. Otherwise, as it will take the first of the list, it will upgrade with the older version of Slack package and mm -hmm. it will be a mess because you yeah. need the newer version of Slack package. Yeah. And, and that's good advice on, on, on most distros. If your package manager has an update, update it first before you run the system wide. Yes. All right, so I'm going to hit OK here, and yeah, again, download speeds are pretty fast. Uh, it's good. Normally, it's good. And these are big downloads too because it's a kernel update, so yes. it, it's good to have good speeds. And the, the problem is with the kernel update. Uh, first of all, it checks uh, the kernel image. If it's good, it removes uh, the current one and it installs the new one, so it takes time. You have to remove I mean, thousands of files uh, from the old kernel and installing the new files for the new kernel, so it takes time. Yeah. Yeah, let's see, download speeds are right around 1.2 megabytes a second. That's pretty good. Of course, this may take a second. And we had five packages. Yes, but you have big ones. You have a yeah, kernel. yeah, they, these yeah. If you have LibreOffice, for instance, a new uh, version of LibreOffice, it takes time. If you have a new yes. version, of certain packages take some time. Yeah. So. Yeah. Your web browsers, the big ones, can take yes. some time too. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, the Linux kernel, you know, the size of this thing. How many millions of lines of code is it now? Uh, 
it, it grows so fast exponentially. Yes. Uh, I, I'm not even sure well, where, where they're six, at. On... No, more than six million for sure. Yeah, yeah. Several millions, yes. Mm -hmm. but of course, now what will happen in the future, uh, many lines are going to be deleted because uh, these lines were there to support very old hardware. When yeah. there, these, old, these old hardware uh, don't exist anymore, these lines have to be deleted. So that, in the future, you will have many lines are, which are going to be deleted. Yeah, that's the problem with the uh, all that legacy code is uh, somebody's got to clean all that up eventually. Yes. Yeah. But of course, gonna... you have the newer hardware, and then you have to add those lines yeah. for the support for the new hardware. Yeah, yeah. It, it is an amazing project. Uh, you know, you got to admire the guys that that yes. work on the kernel. Yes. Of course, so so much so much of that is is due to uh, corporate sponsors and donations. To I mean, we have to give credit to companies like Google and Microsoft. I mean, they do support the kernel. I know they're yes. big and evil, but... <laughs> yes, AMD supports the kernel. Yes. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. so there are thousands of lines for AMD. Right. And um, also, uh, Linus now has uh, more than 1,200 uh, persons working on the kernel. So yeah. it's got a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of people like to think that the uh, kernel is like a community project, that a lot of people are just working on it you know, free as free and open source software. But to be honest, over 70% of the people that work on the kernel are working on it on behalf of a corporation that is basically paying them to, to put stuff in the, you know. So Microsoft, they have employees contributing to the kernel mainly for their own purposes, you know, the uh, Azure stuff. <laughs> and uh, no doubt Google for, you know, all their operating systems. Android, Chrome OS, and I, I'm going to pause the video just for a second while we wait for this to download. So the install of the upgrade has finished and it is telling us we have a kernel image update. So because we have a kernel image update, we do need to update the bootloader. We need to run this command. It actually tells us in the terminal what to run slash sbin slash lilo. So let me run that as root. Okay. And I think uh, we have com completed the upgrade now, Serge. Where to now? So now that we have upgraded kernel, we will uh, edit a file so that you can log in automatically into a graphical session without having to go through Stardex, but it's not mandatory. You can choose, you can always go through Stardex if you wish so, or, yeah. but I will show you the way to go to the graphical, uh, I mean, the graphical session immediately without going through Stardex. So you need to edit the file slash etc slash init tab. It is a file, slash okay. etc slash init tab. Slash et. ETC slash in it tab in it tab with two T in it two T okay all right and we have that open and you, you have you've got a default somewhere uh, at this moment it is three you have to change the three into a four okay let's somewhere, see somewhere somewhere in the ETC uh, slash in it tab you have a line with the default the default run level. Is it the default run level? Okay, I see. Okay, so there is the a default three, so run level ID colon three. I yes. see it. And okay, you change a three with a four, you save it, and then you can reboot, and you will be able to reboot as DT. Okay, well, let's reboot the machine and see what happens. We need to reboot anyway since we did the kernel update. Yes. All right. It's shutting down the VM. And we're back to the splash screen here, and it's loading up the Slackware. And this time, instead of a command prompt, it should just automatically start X. Start X as the DT user too, no longer as root now. 
Yep. And we're at a, a login screen. Awesome. And that worked. Thank you, Serge. So this is the way to get into a graphical session automatically if you wish so. Now we can show you, if, if you want, if you have still time enough, uh, yep. how to install a package. Like let's, let's definitely do that because that's probably one of the more important things to actually show people is yes. how do you install software that's not already on the ISO. The ISO included almost everything you could possibly want, but eventually you're going to need something that's not here. So uh, what should we try to install? So uh, the first thing we'll do, we'll open uh, a web browser, Firefox for instance. Okay. And Firefox is installed here. It's going to take a second to load in this VM. All right. And what website should I navigate to? So you can go into the URL bar with uh, mm -hmm. packages.org, so pkgs.org. Okay. Uh, did I not spell that right? P -K packages? Packages, it is pkgs.org. Ah. Uh, I was wondering why packages.org was trying to sell me a trip to Cancun. <laughs> No, that's not normal. <laughs> okay, you are on the website? I am, yep. Okay, so now you have somewhere a search field on the right, and you can put SM player, and when you will begin to type, it will ask you which distribution, and there you type, you have a oh. drop-down menu, and you choose Slackware 14.2. Hold on just a second. This VM is not liking to capture my keyboard. And, uh, Obviously, the distribution we need is Slackware 14.2. And then yep. in the search field, you can put SM player with lowercase letter. SM player. So we have some, some options here. Let's see, yes. SM player I586. Uh, so you, you have to go down. There is, a, there is a Slack only somewhere. And yes. Choose the x86 64. X86 64. So yeah. you, you click on that link, and it will bring you the page, and it will tell you how to do it. And okay, so I clicked on the page. So we're on the page for SM Player 18.6 yes. uh, x86. Okay. Of course. Okay. Now you uh, have to scroll down where you see. Uh, do you have a requires? Does it need yep. to have a dependency somewhere or not? Required by SM Player skins and SM Player. Okay. This is required by. Do you have a requires? Section? I do not see anything okay. that says requires. So. so this means you have no dependency to install. So now you go to the section with binary package. Uh, download. Binary download. Yep, I've okay. got it. So you have you, you can click on it to save the file, but uh, somewhere under you have the command to do to install a package. It will be upgrade package space hyphen hyphen install hyphen new and then the name of the package. Do you have that I file? needed uh, I need to download this file first. Yes, first okay. save it. Then it will be it. your download file and then as root you have the command to type. It is somewhere under the binary package in red, presumably, to tell you what you have to do to install okay. the package. So let me switch over to console. And do I need to CD into the downloads so, folder? So CD slash home slash dt slash downloads. Okay, so you can do a less to see I, the package. I, I, I did, and okay. it is and there. Now you ask root, upgrade package. So sudo. No, no, sudo minus s then. You, you will see, try to do sudo upgrade and you will see it will. Uh, it won't allow you. Oh, that's right. We discussed this earlier yes, uh, yes. off camera. Yep. So either uh, sudo minus s or su minus su hyphen space hyphen. One of, one of these two commands first. Okay, yeah, so we are logged in as root now. So, uh, P PWD, to see in which directory you are, because if you are root, you are in the root directory, and not in the 
slash yeah, shell. print working directory we are in slash root so we need to cd again yes or or you can do upgrade package space iphone iphone install iphone u space and then slash home slash dt slash downloads and tap right the right the full path. Yes, full path okay well i've cd'd into downloads so what command should i uh, run for this so once you are in the downloads directory upgrade pkg in one word oh. upgrade pkg okay space then a double iphone install iphone u with two l's iphone. install with two l's iphone u space tap completion for the sm player package oh okay and enter and it is installed was there supposed to be a space in between install and dash u uh so uh, you, you got iPhone, iPhone install, iPhone new, no space with the iPhone the new, iPhone new, N E W, space and then the name of the package. Oh, okay. I typed that wrong. Yeah, it's installing now. Okay, now you can see in the applications uh, if uh, you find as a player in multimedia. So if I go to the kicks kickoff menu here in KDE four. Yes. Show if I go to multimedia. multimedia, or you type SM Player in the search field, yeah, that's a good way to find it too. It is there. We have SM Player. Does it launch? Let's see if yes. it executes. It does. It does. Yes. It functions. So, it functions, yes. very so, cool. So now to see if it functions correctly, you can go in Firefox. You can choose one of your videos, but a very short one, one of five or six minutes, and yep. you take the link. And then you open and, and, and put it in the URL stream, the network stream, in the URL, you paste uh, the link of one of your videos and right. you open it and we'll see if it works. Okay. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is run through uh, Slack builds. So I've gone to slackbuilds.org here and Slack builds builds things from source. So we're going to pick a small library to install nothing terribly big because compile times can take forever compiling something large I am going to install a Python library a small Python library called PyTZ and there are download links on the page uh, Surge there is a one called source download that has a version number in it and then it has a download slack build PyTZ with no version number I need to grab both of those. Yes, you need to grab both of those, but the first one is to grab the one from uh, the Slack build. So this one here, so we need to grab this one here with no version number. Yes, that's it. Okay. And then if I CD into my downloads directory as root, we need to be root for this, no, no, right? No, 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 no not root. You not root for this one? File, you can untar it as a standard use. It oh, that's right. Exit un, un, script that you need to do. Uh, so let's power. let me exit. Yeah, I was already the root user. Let me exit back out of that, and now I will cd into the downloads folder as my home user. If I do a ls. Yeah, pi.tz.tar.gz is there. So I need to untar that file. So that is tar xvf and. Let me write the name of the file. And we have untarred that file. So now if I do a ls, I have a folder called pytz there now, a directory. Uh, where do I go from here now that I have that directory created? Okay, now you need to download the source package, the one with okay. the numbers in it. Okay. And, and I've already got that downloaded. Okay, then you can use your file manager if you wish so and move the source tar tarball into the directory which was created because you untarred the first time. I will, since I'm already in the console, I know a lot of users hate when I do this, but I will move it in the terminal. Move, so move the n name of the file. Yes, to the directory. Mm -hmm. But you are correct. I could have opened up Dolphin and just dragged the file over to the, the folder. Yes, for instance. All right, now when I do a ls, yeah, 
the one with the version numbers is no longer there when I do a ls. So if I cd into that pitz directory and do a ls, that tar.gz is there. Okay, now what we need to do, we have everything. We have the source tarball, we have the script. We need to execute the script, but to execute the script, you need to be root. So let me switch to the root user. And now I need to CD back into the downloads folder because your root user, when you log in, oftentimes logs into the root directory. So CD home slash DT slash downloads pi TZ. Okay, and I am in the correct directory now. So you said you can do ls to see that you have your script there? I have, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you have to, you, you need to execute. To execute a script, you have three commands to do that. Either dot slash the name of the script, or bash space the name of the script, or source space the name of the script. It's up to you. Okay. Uh, the uh, name of the script is Slack build, right? Yes, with that application, okay. it will choose the Slack build because it knows okay. it, it has to execute something. So, so as root, script. I'm gonna run as root. I'm gonna run dot slash pytz dot Slack build, and it should build the package, and it is. It's compiling. Okay. No, it's uh yeah Slack package slash temp slash pytz. So it it has moved all of this into a uh, temporary directory. Yes, and now you need to install it on the system because it is in the temp directory, but it, it needs to be placed in the right directory. Um, and the command for that is install package pkg? Yes. And then just the location of that, that, that Space, directory. Space, and then slash temp, slash tap completion for the package. And that is it. It is installed. It is installed, yes. Very cool. So that is actually not bad. I mean, that is no, that's no more difficult than installing something from the AUR and Arch or, you know, playing with the overlays in Gen 2. I mean, you go to the Slack build site, search for it, download it. Yes. So yeah. the only difficulty will come with big packages, which have lots of dependencies, because you need to make yourself the tree graph for the package the first dependencies, the dependencies of the dependencies, and then the dependencies of the dependencies of the dependencies. You have to oh, create yeah. it your own. Then begin at the bottom when you have no dependencies anymore and go up compiling it through Slack builds up to you until you go to the first package and you can compile it and install it. If you try to install it without having all the dependencies, you will have problems. Yeah, so managing dependencies is yes. the issue, huh? Is the issue. You are the master on board. So, Sergey, uh, this you you manage your own dependencies in Slackware. What is the best way to go about that? As far okay, as finding so for a, a new user who doesn't know uh, which dependencies uh, belong to a certain package, uh, it is a very good idea to go to the website of Salix OS. SalixOS.org. Salix.org, yes. And on the home page of this website, you have on the right hand side, you have in green somewhere uh, a menu called Package Search. It is under Web Search, you have a Package Search. And ah, I see click, it. You click on it. Okay. So once you are in the second window, uh, you can put a name. For instance, you could put uh, Clementine in the enter search term. And I don't know if there is a version for 14.2, uh, but for 14.1, there should be a version. And no results when, found. So you, uh, you can choose another version with a with 14.2. You can choose 14.1, for instance. I will go there and see if it exists, but I presume it should exist. Yes, yeah. for, for the 14.1, you have a, a result. Yes, we do. Yep. So, you click now on Clementine in this package search results. You click on it. Mm -hmm. And have, we have our dependencies, yeah. You have the, but these are the first dependencies. If you click, for instance, we will go click on Misa, for instance, and you okay. have 
the dependencies of the first the, uh, of the dependencies yes uh, you see that is the difficulty of slackware you yeah. need to check that you have all these dependencies until there are no dependencies anymore and then yes. you can install page that's the, the the, yeah this is the rabbit hole you sometimes get into when you start building things from source is you know you're building something from source on your distro because it's not in the repos and then you find a dependency that's also not in the repos and then a dependency of the dependency that's not yes. and then it, it's an all-day job sometimes yes. yeah. okay. well i think that's where we're we'll wrap this up uh serge i really appreciate you hanging out with me today and helping me get through slackware current uh really interesting distro i'm glad i finally taken a look at it on the channel uh, I, I really like it as far as it's actually pretty intuitive and easy to use a lot of people fear it but uh, I'm, I was pretty impressed with everything about it especially the package management stuff a lot of people fear that it seems pretty straightforward to somebody like me uh, I don't know uh, I, I know I know you love slack where you also use things like like gen 2 uh, I mean what are your thoughts as far as uh, you know, how would you compare something like Slackware to Gentoo, since you're very familiar with both those distros? How did they differ? So, you know, for... uh, on Gentoo, you compile from source. Every package is compiled from source, unless you can give, sometimes you can have a binary package if you wish for LibreOffice, Firefox, for instance. If you don't want to compile, for instance, LibreOffice, it takes almost two hours to compile. If you don't want to go through two hours of uh, compilation time, you can use the LibreOffice hyphen bin. And this is installed right. like a binary package on another distribution. It will go very quickly. So yeah. if you if you can't wait uh, that much, then you can choose that. On Slackware, you have I show you both ways. You can install a binary package, or you can go through Slack builds and create a package and then install it. So you have both. Uh, so uh, so, this so the, is the main difference between the yeah. two. So the two different ways uh, you talked me through on camera, the first was the binary way with this, the, uh, what was it, Slack PKG? Uh, it, so, it was with uh, the packages.org and then you yeah. use the upgrade package, iPhone, iPhone, install new, that's right. package. Okay, so that's, that's one way. The second then, way is to create uh, through source, through Slack builds. Then you have a package and you do install package from the slash temp directory. It's the second way. But there are still other ways. We won't talk about them today but there are other ways but since a few years uh, there are special tools which have been created on slacker to help you sbo package sbo tools slack package plus these three tools if you use them it will go much faster because some of them will check for the dependencies will find all the packages you need uh, in a quick way so uh, nowadays it's uh, even I would say um, it's uh, rather simple to use. Easy, easy, yeah. Easy. Once you learn how to use them, yeah. then it will be very easy. Yeah. yeah, it seems very straightforward. It's very, uh, very much follows the KISS principle, the yes. keep it simple, stupid yes. principle. Yes, yes. Uh, pretty much uh, whatever you're doing to this machine, uh, you do it. You know, nobody else is doing it for you. So, And uh, I, I must say that Slackware is one of the rare distributions that follows the LSB for the package management. Which the LSB recommendations was to use the RPM package, and Slackware has a tool called RPM to TGZ or RPM to TarGZ, and you can install a package from an RPM-based distribution, and you can create a package which has the Slackware format, and you can install it then into your system. So this is a fantastic cool. tool. If you find mm -hmm. packages that you can find only on an RPM-based distribution, you can do this through that tool. Very cool. Well, well, we may cover that in a, a future video. I, I definitely will will keep up with Slackware. I'm glad I uh, uh, played around with it the last couple of days. I actually ran through uh, three or four installations of slackware since yesterday playing around with it and again I, i'm really impressed with it uh people have been bugging me about slackware because it's, it's strange that it took so long I and mean, it's one of the the big distributions i mean it's the oldest active linux distribution 
and for whatever reason I haven't gotten around to this one and the other one people really bug me about I will take a look at Puppy Linux soon guys so calm down on that one yes and what we can say about Slackware is it uses exactly the same tools as 25 years ago it hasn't changed its uh, init system it's always since we init mm -hmm. like 25 years ago it hasn't changed uh, these package managers it's always the same like 25 years ago as for instance uh, even under Fedora it was Yum, now it is DNF. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. On Ubuntu base, it was, uh, they used Upstart, now it is SystemD, so they change uh, things. But Slackware uses exactly the same tools as 25 years ago. So it is fantastic that it, it works really fine mm -hmm. with the tools which were there 25 years ago. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you, Serge. Uh, before we go, do you want to... Um, share um, any kind of social media or, or anything uh, where can people find you other than youtube <laughs> they can find me uh, at the moment i'm still working you see um so uh, i'm uh, waking up at 5 a.m i'm coming back generally at 7 p.m i need to mm -hmm. eat i drink one or two glasses of wine and then i enjoy for instance your videos and videos of other youtubers so i don't have time at the moment to create and to upload my own videos i will do yeah. that in the future when i will be retired then i will have time to do it but at the yeah. moment uh, i prefer to help people with some comments uh, in youtubes and even on forums but uh, to create my own videos as i see it takes time to create videos so yeah. i don't have unfortunately i don't have that time so you won't find me on any channel or be it youtube or another but in the future if i do videos it will be on uh, from a tube so peer tube is the same okay yeah so so it's a very cool open source yeah. youtube channel yeah it's one i i'm interested in, in exploring eventually i would love to uh I would love to get away from Google at some point, uh, just yes. get Google out of my life, but for now I'm kind of stuck with it. But thank you, Serge, for all your help today on Slackware. And on, on my way, final thoughts, I will say, I will put, post a link to Patrick's yes. uh, PayPal. So you guys, if, if you got a few bucks, please contribute to Patrick Volkerding, the main yes. dev of Slackware. He needs the funds. So this thank the you, Serge. most important thing it is to help Patrick because he needs it. Absolutely. Thanks, Serge. Yes. And before I go, I do need to give a special thanks to my patrons, all of my Patreon supporters. Ansem, David, Carlos, Chuck, Daniel, Brian, Leo, A.K. Ron, Mr. Neely, Pops, Bart, Robert, Marcus, Dan, uh, Mr. Smarty Pants, Swami, Ben, Hume, Keith, Dan, uh, Mr. GFY, Michael, Tony, Bruno, David, Sylvia, Omar, John, Carl, Greg, Christian, Rob, Matt, Mark, Tiedemann, 1st Stephen, 2nd Stephen, 3rd Stephen, Eduardo, Alex, Jake, Benjamin, Marcus, Interceptor, 1st Paul, 2nd Paul, Alan, Katrina, Voice Love, Matthias, John, and Tubella. You guys rock. You guys help make this show possible. Peace, guys.